An unusual location for the sky tonight. It's three o'clock in the morning, and we're at Town Nine in North Scotland, waiting for the annular eclipse of the sun. And with me are three very wrinkled with visitors of the sky tonight, Ian Nicholson, Dr. Steve Wainwright, and Dr. Brian May. Yes, it really is the great guitarist. Some people think he's also a highly qualified astronomer. And now for tonight's main event, the annular eclipse of the sun. When the moon passes in front of the sun and is not quite big enough to cover it, and therefore a ring of sunlight left showing around the dark body of the moon. Interesting and won't happen again for a long time. Well, Leon, uh, we all got our own programmes. What are you going to do particularly? Well, I think uh, what's, what I'm going to do is just watch this thing visually because it's going to be quite a dramatic event for two reasons. One is that it's uh, taking place immediately after sunrise, so the sun will be coming up uh, as a dramatically thin crescent and then growing to annularity. It should be reddened uh, by the, the atmosphere. And the other thing is that because it's so close to the, uh, the horizon, atmospheric refraction is going to distort the sun and make it look rather like a, a squashed oval rather than a complete circle. So that, that'll be quite an exciting thing to see. It certainly will. Now, Steve, uh, if we do have clouds, you're, you're right hoping to see through them, aren't you? Yes, I am. I, I hope to capture everything that, that Ian has just described. But with the infrared sensitivity of the video camera that I'm going to try, I'm hoping that if we have clouds that, that might visually obscure it and spoil it for you, mm -hmm. that maybe we'll still be able to see it on the video camera. Well, Brian, you have your programme too. My programme is just to be here and observe, really. I, I think in previous eclipses, I've sometimes spent too much time fiddling around with equipment and sort of felt that I missed the event, so I'll just observe and... Uh, I, I brought a video camera, but I'll just leave it running and uh, absorb the event, I think. And, of course, we depend entirely upon a really clear horizon. Whether a cloud there at the moment, let's hope they clear away. The eclipse isn't the only interesting event of this month. We already had a transit of Mercury. Clear away for the critical moments. I don't entirely like the look of that cloud, do you? It's just in the perfectly wrong place, isn't it? And the rest of the sky is beautiful, and it's just the one place we want to... There was a sporting chance, but here to over to the left of Rabbit Island, that's where the sun comes up. Yes, it, it's hard to know how transparent it is, isn't it? I mean, we might see it through there. It's very difficult we might, to know, because after, after the sun hasn't, hasn't risen yet, it may, it may burn the clouds up, as they We can hope. We can hope. Yes. At least one thing we show, we'll see the partial phase later. Certainly, certainly. And if we want. Yes, it would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. About two, two minutes. Two minutes to go. Two minutes and counting. Yeah. You can definitely see that uh, patch I know. where the sun was illuminating it, moving to the right. I want to see Steve um, again. See it there. Any joy, Steve? No. No, no I see no, it. Thing. I believe the sun is just behind there. Mm. Mm. One thing we can see is just how pale this light is. There's no doubt that we're near mid-eclipse, just looking at the quality of the light and the sort of eerie, eerie darkness and pale pastel shades. Well, strike, but, um, strike the cover behind which we are near the cloudy total eclipse. It's kind of, kind of a strange light. It is, isn't it? I believe the sun is all, you can almost... You know, yes, we're not you, you can almost see the sun. It's just through there, you can What's see that? it. It's very, very close. Any it's joy, Steve? Close. Any joy, Steve? I think we've got it, actually, yes. here. Yeah, Do we you have see it. Anything? We've no, got it, Patrick, no. yeah. Oh, it's there. Yes. You can see it. There, the annual eclipse. We're just getting it directly now, Patrick. Yep. See very, very faint un under the light patch. Under the light patch. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, the yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, the partial phase coming through very nicely, a very thin crescent. Yes, indeed, they can see it quite clearly now. It's certainly dramatic, isn't it? It's got that look, look, look of a ring of fire on it. Um, now, that's good because you can really get the impression that the disk of the moon is smaller than the, the disk of the sun, can't you? And that the curvature is different. Ah, oh, it really is quite beautiful. Yes, it really looks remarkably smaller than the, the sun the moon this time. It's worth seeing that. Hmm, certainly is. Well, we so nearly succeeded. The cloud was there, it was thinning all the time, we thought we might get it, we saw the glow of the sun, and then eventually the sun did come out just at the end of the anniversary. But luckily, 
that Steve and Brown got a bit into this. Mm. Well, that's right. We thought that the video cameras might be sensitive enough in the infrared for us to see it, and we, we did capture the full annularity, so we're pleased. And also yes. you did the same, didn't you? Yes, we'll have one for the sky at night, hopefully. We'll, well, we'll do a nice print of it, I'm sure. And Definitely. we saw it visually shortly afterwards. Amazing oh. how quickly the light came back. And now, of course, the, the sun is partially eclipsed, and you have hardly anything happening at all. It was very obvious, wasn't it, even in the partial phase, how, how much smaller the moon appeared than, than the sun itself, which it of course is what you would expect. So and even though we missed yeah. the main spectacle visually, at least it won't get into this, so I think we can say uh, the whole thing has been a success. Or in, in any entertaining, it'll be a long, long time before it happens again. Yes. So, Glad Brown, Ian, Steve, thank you very much indeed. Okay. Next you, month, you. something different, I'll be joined by Dr. Helen Walker, talking about the various space probes, including those being sent to Mars next month. Also, David Hardy will be here for another winner of our Mars Base competition. On also a bit of our website, www.bbc.co.uk slash space. And so, from Scotland, at the end of our annual eclipse, for the moment, good night.